Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about growing basil. I'm going to cover planting, timing, um, if you want to top it off I'll show you how the growth changes, but really getting your basil started indoors. You could actually keep this going inside and you can harvest basil through the winter months. Basil is a warm season crop, really likes warm soil, 60 degree soil, 70 degree soil, loves 70 to 80 degree days and it's good to thrive. When it gets really hot up into the 90s, sometimes it starts flowering really quickly, the flavor changes. So as I get into the depth of summer here in Maryland Zone 7, sometime in July, I put this in a place and protect it with some shade cloth and it will continue to thrive and do so much better through July and August, early August, than if I left it baking in the sun. It doesn't like the sun to bake down on its root system and raise that soil temperature up. That's why you get basil that flowers. Heat, warm soil, warm roots really is what causes plants to regulate their growth. So if it gets too hot, they slow down, they flower, they change. We'll be talking more about that in the future when I'm outside planting in the garden. If you want to follow me, I'll show you how to take care of this outside. Today is September. Yeah, right. Today is February 9th. I started these basils at different times and let's go backwards. This was started on 1217. The two plants here, the two large plants, let me get them right here. This is one I, that I topped off right back here. They were started on 1217. The plants here were started on 1-9, January 9th. And then the plants here that I just started and are just sprouting were started on, you can see it right there, January 31st. So it takes about, let's say 10 days for them to germinate in a house where the temperatures are about 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. These were all grown under grow lights. Again, subscribe and check out my whole series on starting seeds indoors that I do every year. And I have a bunch of videos this year on doing that if you start looking back at January 1st. So let's go backwards actually with topping off and then we'll get to planting. So a single basil plant, I have that growing right here in a regular six cell, you know, standard size. One plant, and this is a pretty nice size plant. Let me make sure I keep it in frame here. And this has been growing since 1217. And you can see a single plant right in the joints. Some additional leaves start growing. You can see them up here. Naturally, as the plant gets bigger, it's going to bush out a little bit. This is the main growing tip right here. And it's basically leaves, you know, nodes, inner node, but that's basically leaves, stem, leaves, stem, and it keeps going upward. And here's the tip. So just to see what I did about probably two weeks ago, I cut that tip off. You can see it right there. And what it did is it kind of put the energy to the plant splitting. Now it has two main growing tips and these will get larger and branch out like a Y. And then if you want, you could, you know, maybe when this gets, let's say like, let's say it goes something like this, that new cut gets one, two, three sets of leaves, you know, coming out this way and I'll cut the tip again and that will cause it to branch out. It's a way to make the plant bushier. You don't have to do that, but I just wanted to show you, you know, not topped off and then topped off and you see the two new main growing tips start right there. You don't have to do this. When I plant outside, I like to put three or four plants into a space. I just take care of them. I manage the soil temperature. A little bit of shade cloth keeps these plants going all season long. They love the warmth. They just don't like the soil to be baked. It's a really important point because people don't think about that. So if you want to top them off, this is what's going to happen. It's really up to you. Timing wise, again, today is February 9th. And you really need, if you're just creating your seed starts to go outside, these were started on January 9th. You need about four weeks. Let me just be clear too, because it gets confusing. If you put the seed in the soil and it germinates within seven to 10 days, this is four weeks from putting the seed in the soil. To keep it simple, once you see your seeds germinate, just like that, you want about three weeks of growth, maybe four weeks, and that's gonna be the right size for your transplant. You wanna get that into the garden. You don't have to hold these indoors really past three, four weeks after germination. The roots are gonna get bound, 
the plant is going to get large. It's just not necessary for it to happen inside. You want to get this outside when it's smaller, let the bigger root systems develop, let everything kind of take off. This is a perfect size for basil transplant. Now when you take this outside, if you just put this right into the soil, the UV rays, the ultraviolet rays of the sun will destroy this plant in one day. This plant is not used to the wind, the cold, temperature changes, or the sun. So you have to slowly move this out over a week. So that four weeks that you're growing this, one of those weeks, well, the week at the end, has to be transitioning, transitioning this slowly outdoors, maybe 30 minutes the first day, a little bit longer the next day. Do that over a seven day period. The plant toughens up to the wind, the UV rays, and everything is gonna be fine. You can also put this outside into the ground Put some shade cloth over it if you want. If it's going out when it's really hot, really sunny, you just don't want the transition from inside, you know, where it's kind of wimpy and it's been pampered at 70 degrees, going into a warmer environment, intense sun, and it damages the plant. You're better off just kind of going slow and steady. Here's another look at the topping off. I did this group later, and you can see, like right in here, this plant's been topped off and it's just starting to kind of grow those two growing tips right there. Same thing with this one. Let me get it in there. Topped off and then you see how it's going to be bushier. And it works. You know, it's really up to you if you want to do that. I do recommend, I sell these at my seed shop. These are larger cells. These are great for starting a lot of your plants. You don't need to pot them up. Again, Four weeks in a smaller cell cells work, but if you were growing these inside and you were harvesting inside, you're going to want a bigger cell so you can have more plants going. And you can put in a couple of plants, like three plants are in there. There are actually too many in there, so I'm going to thin them out. You can also see that sometimes this is basil that just germinated later. So I'm going to thin this group down to four plants right into the, in that cell. Basil does need to be under grow lights, at least to get it to this size. Once the plant is bigger, you can move this to a windowsill that gets, you know, southern exposure. But for the initial growing, it has to be under grow lights. It needs intense light. And sometimes you'll see something like this. This plant was just getting too close to the lights and it damaged the leaf. You want the lights to be at least two to three inches above the leaves so they're not touching the LEDs or anything like that. Seed starting is pretty straightforward. And I'm not going to give, you know, a total demonstration because it can be explained pretty easily. Set up your cell. This is actually um, purple opal basil. Set up your cell with your starting mix. And basil seeds are really small. They look like this. And you're only going to plant them about a quarter inch deep. And I'll talk a little bit about watering and fertilizing too. So you set up your cell. If you're doing transplants, you know, this size is perfectly fine. And you're just gonna take, I like to take three or four seeds, and you would just drop them right onto the surface. I have some planted on there, so I'm not gonna do that now. And then I just scratch them in about a quarter of an inch, and then I come in and I just press them down. That's good to go, that's all you have to do for basil. You wanna thin them down to two or three plants in the cell the size, you know, four if you're using a bigger one. I just like to put in more than one seed because if that seed doesn't germinate, you're waiting around for a seed that's not going to germinate. So if you put in multiple, you can always thin them down to one. Roots do compete, so if you put in too many, the roots are going to compete, the plants aren't going to get as large. So it's just really up to you what you want to do. Once I put mine into the cells, I just like to put a piece of masking tape. I found this is the easiest way. Just put the date, what you're growing. I used to use these markers a lot. They're great if you have lights that set up a little bit higher and they're brighter. But because I put my lights lower, when I'm moving this in and out, a lot of times these get knocked off. I like using these more in the greenhouse. So once they're done, they go into the flat. That looks something like this. I just sit them in here, water from the bottom, let the water seep up from the bottom of the, of the cell into the plant. This way you're not disturbing the soil or knocking the seeds around. You can use a foil baking tray, anything that these can sit in. So I just load these into the flat bottom water. How often do you water? Well, you can see the ones on the right are nice and dark. These were just watered. These were watered a couple days before that. And you see how it's starting to lighten right here? 
once the starting mix goes from this dark brown color to this light color color within a day or two you want to bottom water and you just keep an eye on the starting mix that that way that's how often you basically want to water it'll be nice and dark seeds germinate they grow water evaporates becomes a lighter brown water from the bottom and you wait again when do you want to feed these after they're growing after they've germinated I don't know, they're growing seven or 10 days. You can use a very dilute, dilute water-soluble fertilizer about every other watering. It's better to water slow and low. And again, I have plenty of videos on fertilizing, lighting, watering, everything I just talked about in more detail if you wanna check out my channel. This is really all you need to do to grow basil. Larger containers, you can grow it indoors. Smaller containers, about three, four weeks of growth after germination, make perfect transplants to go out into your garden. You do want these to be under grow lights till they get to, you know, about this size and then they could go to that south facing window. Thanks so much for watching. Basil is a wonderful herb to grow. It has to go outside. I didn't mention this, but frost will kill it. So you really want this to go out when the days are getting into the 70s. The soil temperatures are in the 60s. It's beginning to warm up. Basil is going to do really well. And really the tip I want to stress again is come mid July when it's so hot and that soil that sun is baking the soil, warming up the roots at top two, four inches, use some shade cloth. You'll be amazed at how long the basil continues without you having to replace it. It flowers a, less, a lot less frequently and it just bushes out into these beautiful leaves. And again, please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. I have all kinds of seed starting supplies there. Thanks so much for watching.